Hi guys, happy Halloween. Today I am sharing with you a layout that I made using my Silhouette Cameo and I just cut out this little, what is it called, spider web and the word Halloween and I'm going to end up not using the word Halloween. I'm going to try to make it work and then I just didn't like how it turned out. So I'm just going to end up using the spider web and what I'm going to do is fill in a good majority of the holes in the spider web with the different pattern papers and so I'm going to show you a little bit of me doing that and then in a couple minutes I will um, move on to a different part of the layout so you have to watch me cut out all these pieces. But um, I just want to say happy Halloween to everyone and hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you guys have either went trick-or-treating or have given out some trick-or-treats to some of the neighborhood folks that have walked by. Um, if you're not from the U.S., I don't think you guys all celebrate Halloween. I'm not quite sure, actually. Um, but hopefully you guys are having a good time wherever you are, and it, I think it's a good excuse to have a little bit of a party and dress up and act silly. So tonight, me and my daughter and my husband are all going to be going out trick-or-treating at a friend's house. Um, we don't have a lot of kids in our neighborhood, so we are going to go be meeting up with them and trick-or-treating with their little daughter. So we're pretty excited. So anyway, back to the layout. Um, here I have just cut out a couple of these paste, pieces of paper and I'm using my fine liner bottle to add some glue and then add them onto the die cut. So here I fast forwarded to after I have cut a good chunk of the um, papers out and I'm going to end up adding a few pieces here and there after this because I thought that was just a little bit too bare and I thought it needed a little bit more. So right now I'm just trimming down my photo and this is a picture of me and my daughter at uh, an, a Halloween event a couple years ago. I think probably two, two or three years ago. So I'm going to end up mounting the spider web on this gray colored cardstock and I not sure the brand. It may be a basil. It does have a little bit of a texture to it, so um, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. This came in a Scraptastic kit. This is an entire Scraptastic kit of papers and things like that from Halloween last year. So I'm just using everything that came in that Scraptastic kit. So now that I've trimmed down the photo and have added the extra layers of paper behind the spider web, I'm going to add some layering behind the photo. And I just love the papers that came in this collection. I'm a big sucker for Halloween collections. They're so cute. I never have anywhere near enough Halloween pictures to scrapbook, but I just love the collections that they come out during Halloween. So I believe this purple paper is a doodlebug paper, and I think a good chunk of the paper in this was doodlebug. There was another brand, that one that you can see peeking out through the spider web with the moon on it. That was, oh, what was that brand? Something with an A, I think. I can't quite remember the name of it. Um, Authentique, that's what it was. So this, this one here with the plaid is an Authentique, and then the one with the moon and white background was also Authentique, and it has a really cool texture. Um, the paper just has this really neat texture. So I'm going to use my Prima Chalk in black coal to edge all of my layers. I thought it was looking a little bit boring and I thought it needed a little bit more depth. So adding this black chalk ink just kind of helped it pop a little bit more between the layers um, so they didn't look so similar. So I'm just going to edge all around that there. And then once I like everything placed, I'm going to then glue everything down. And it's going to end up staying in that bottom right hand corner there and I'm going to glue down my spider web and then once I do that I'm going to pop up my photo and it's going to go there like I said in the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to do some embellishing clusters. Um, before that though I'm going to distress the background or do a background on the gray cardstock and I did not gesso it or prime it in any way. I wanted to have the color kind of soak into the paper this time. So I'm going to use a couple different shades of purple and I'm just going to kind of use the mushing technique and this is just a really inexpensive um, watercolor palette that I got from Michaels. It was I don't know, maybe like five bucks or something like that. It was very cheap. Maybe I got five dollars after my coupon, but I'm just going to use a couple different shades here. I'm just going to kind of mush it all over the background so I get a little modeled effect. And like I said, I did not gesso or prime the paper this time. I didn't use a lot of water, so it didn't warp, and the paper I'm using is pretty thick. So it ended up turning out really nice, and I like that it soaked into the paper more and didn't sit on top as much. So you'll see me kind of doing that here. And as I go, I'm going to blot up the excess with some paper towel, too. And I just really, really like how this turned out. I think I need to try to 
do this technique a little bit more without gessoing the background for some other layouts where I kind of want a little bit more saturated color. It just gives a different look. So I will have to try some more of that in the future videos. So I'm going to first use this very purpley kind of color and then I'm going to use one that has maybe a little bit more red in the color just to give it some more depth and dimension. So I'm going to switch up my colors here after I clean off the plastic and my mess because I did have a mess. Clean off my brush. Clean, clean, clean. I should have, you know, edited this out, but apparently I did not. I didn't notice I was doing this, but basically I'm just taking a baby wipe and some of my spray bottle and just cleaning out my brush. I didn't have a little thing of water with me and I was lazy, so I just kind of sat there and used the spray bottle to get the paint out of the brush before moving to this purpley color. And like I said, this is maybe just a little bit more of a reddish background to it and it's just going to give an extra depth that just having one color wouldn't give. I think it adds a little extra to this. And then once I'm happy with that, I will dry everything up and then put down my spider web. So I'm just kind of cleaning up. I try to clean up as I go, otherwise I just have this huge mess and it just kind of gets annoying. So I like to have everything kind of clean. So now I'm going to adhere everything. And like I said, I'm gonna pop up that picture. First I'm gonna adhere the web and then trim off the extra pieces that are hanging over um, before I actually finish adhering the picture down. So I'm going to put the pop dots on first and let the pop the picture just kind of sit so I know kind of how I want to layer on top of it because if I waited I probably would have forgotten all about putting these pop dots on so that's why I'm kind of um, doing that and I just moved the pop dots in the center more because I knew I was going to put some embellishing around the picture and I didn't want the pop dots to be in the way. So here like I said I'm just trimming off the extra pieces that are hanging over and then I'm going to pull out the die cut packs and things like that to layer. Now I am putting down my white gel pen and just putting little dash lines all the way through. I, the spider web looked a little plain and I wanted to add a little extra texture to it. So I just used that white jelly roll pen um, on all the black areas to just give it a little stitched appearance. I would have stitched it, but I didn't have my sewing machine at this time. So that's why I ended up just um, using the light white gel pen and I think it looks just fine. So here are some die cuts that came in the Scraptastic kit from last year. That piece of paper I added the little fishtail on it. It was a little saying from I believe the Authentique paper. It was a little poem and it was the, what was it called, the branding strip. And so I just trimmed that out and used that as a little extra. I thought the quote was pretty cool and I like how it kind of pulled my cluster across the page a little bit to the left. And then I don't know if you can see over to the right that Halloween. What I tried to do was I tried to spray it with my mist, my silver mist, and then use the white gel pen to add that dash line to it. And it just, I don't know, it just overpowered the page. It just didn't look quite right, so I ended up scrapping that idea. And actually, I usually keep a lot of that stuff in my videos, but this video was uber long, so I decided you guys didn't need to watch me struggle with this. So I tried to cut out some of those pieces just so the video wasn't 20 minutes long. I try to keep it around 15, which is, this one's a little over. But with all the die cutting and the paper piecing and all that, it did take me a little bit longer than it normally does. So now I'm just going to futz with these different layers. I've cut some of them in half so I can use them on either the left or the right hand side. I have lots of little pieces left over so I'm just adding a little piece here, a little piece there, tucking it in just to give it a little extra color and things like that. And I do futz with this a little, uh, quite a bit until I get what I want and you're going to see here I'm going to try to use that spooky as the title and it did not work. Um, I was trying to add it on top of the picture but there was too much with the spider rub going on that it just kind of was like kind of messed up. You couldn't really tell what it looked like when it was sitting on top of that spider web. On the wax paper it didn't look so bad, but when I tried to set it down it just didn't look right. So you're going to see here I'm going to move it around all over the place. I'm going to decide, oh, I'm going to stick it down here and then I'm going to end up pulling it up and doing something completely different. And actually you don't actually see me um, putting the title on on video but in the still pictures at the end you'll see the title that I decide on and it's the title says you're spooktacular with an exclamation point so stay tuned for the photos at the end so you can actually see what the layout looks like with the title and talking about titles I don't put titles on my pages I don't know, I don't know maybe 25 percent of the time one I'm terrible terrible at titles and two I don't know it gets kind of boring when I say at the zoo or or wherever we're at 
and or something boring or I just I don't know I just don't feel like some pages need a title and I think I'm kind of one of the I don't see a lot of people not putting titles I guess I want to say most people actually put a title down but I don't know sometimes I find it challenging and sometimes I just feel like eh, it doesn't need a title I think it will work just fine the way it is and sorry if you just heard that my cat knocked a box off of the counter because he's crazy and if you watch my videos on my channel, you'll totally see how crazy he is. You'll hear him in the background all the time. He likes to chew on things he shouldn't chew on. He likes to make noises while I'm on the video. He is crazy. So anyway, back to the layout. And so basically, I'm going to be wrapping this up not too much longer. I have a few more embellishments and things like that, actually. Actually, no, I am going to futz with this a little bit more. I'm sorry. Um, I have lots of little um, layering and things like that to do with the stickers on the sticker sheet. And I'm going to pop this one up, and I'm going to keep the backing on it for right now until I get close to the end because I'm not quite sure if I'm going to put any other layers below this little banner. So I'm just going to put the pop dots on for now. And I'm putting the pop dots, pop dots only on the bottom edge. And then this way... Uh, it doesn't compete with the picture because the picture is already on pop dots and then this way it's going to lie flat on the picture and then it's going to be popped up underneath it. So you can see there I just added it down and then it's going to stick right there and then I'm going to start pulling stickers off the sticker sheet. Again using scraps, as much scraps as I can find so that I can just add some extra layers and things like that to the picture. And so I'm just pulling that banner up. I guess I did take the sticky back off of it, but um, it was a good. It wasn't a very good idea that I took the sticky back off because then I was having to futz with this quite a bit. I think futz is the the word of the day for my layouts because I've been using it a lot because that's what I've been doing. Anyway, back to the layout. I'm going to add that little hat. I thought the little witch hat was so cute, but I felt like it needed a little bit of pop up. So I'm leaving it stuck straight to the layout on the bottom. And then I am putting a little bit of a pop dot on the top of the hat just to give it some pop up from the top, but the bottom is, is nice and flat. I'm going to pull some of the stars from the sticker sheet and add them kind of sprinkled throughout the page, all different colors because they have a lot of different colors in the embellishments and the photos. And then next I am, because some of these are not sticking very well, I decide, oh no, actually, these are little die cuts that came in the collection, I'm sorry. Um, the die cuts, I just used the little bit of glue with my fine liner bottle to adhere those ones that did not have the sticky back on them. Now I decided I think I want this banner, and so I'm going to smush it back down. And I like how the layer of the orange paper looks underneath the banner. I think it just gives a little bit of a shelf for the banner to sit on, and it doesn't look like it's floating, and I think it looks a little bit better that way. So here I'm just trying to contemplate what other little pieces I can sh stick in the little layers. And I believe that says, yikes. So I'm sticking that next to the pumpkin. And the sheet of stickers that I'm using is um, Doodlebug. And I believe this might be, hmm, oh, Bella Boulevard. The sticker sheet that I have in my hand now is from Bella Boulevard. Those are from Scraptastic, the little brads. I'm gonna add three little brads and they spell out the word boo and that's gonna go on the top right hand side of my picture. So I'm just gonna use my Tim Holtz poker tool to put coals in the layout where I want them and I'm just going to spell boo and then what I'm going to end up doing on the back side is using some washi tape to cover up the brad so that it doesn't get hooked on other pages and things when I am putting it in my album. I really like these brads. I have trouble using brads sometimes. One reason I think is because I like what they look like a lot and then once I use them they're used and I kind of have a problem like that anyway and the other reason is sometimes I just kind of forget that they that they're round and then it's an afterthought so I'm trying to stick them on but these Halloween ones from Simple Stories I'm pretty sure that's the the brand Simple Stories are just so cute I love like I said earlier Halloween stuff so these work really well for this layout and I am getting those put in and here you're going to see me put some washi tape for the back of them here in a second. 
So after I do add the washi tape, then that's pretty much going to be it. I'm going to end up looking at the sticker sheet, which I don't show on camera a little bit more, but I end up not pulling anything from it. So I'm going to show you some close-ups, and then the photos are going to be after. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, you can head on over to my YouTube channel, Froggy251. I'll leave the link in the information below. If you would like to play along with us at the Crafty Maven Getaway, I would love to see your layout. Please let me know in the comments below that you're playing and give me a link to the, the layout or you can um, let me know that you're playing along through the Facebook group. I would love to see it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a happy Halloween and have a great day. Bye-bye.